Hey, Oliver, how are you today? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, how are things going and how's your year and a half been? <laughs> you know, ups and downs, I'm sure. <laughs> Maybe a few more downs than ups, but hey, you know, keeping on, keeping on. Good stuff, good stuff. Well, thanks for your time today. And, Absolutely. Um, I, I so enjoyed this film, you know, and I wanted to ask you, Firstly, um, what is it like to talk about a film that you made in 2015 and then have the <laughs> opportunity to fix it and or, you know, fix it in your mind and cut sure. it down and, and just tighten it up and, and just to have this opportunity it must be fantastic as a director. It, it is. It's really cool. I, you know, there was a, when I started th this whole thing, when we were going to, you know, when we were discussing this re-release, um, I had a, sort of had a few little things I wanted to do. It, Honestly, this whole thing started because I wanted to put chapter titles in the movie, something okay. I'd always regretted the first time around. I thought I should, and I, and I didn't for one reason or another. And so when we were talking about this re-release, I said, you know, uh, if it's really going to be like a, because uh, Strike Back Studios really said they wanted to do a, a full push. They weren't just going to take the movie and, th you know, it's like, no, we're going to really re-release the movie we want. So I was like, oh, can I maybe tweak a little something then if it's you know okay and so that's all it was going to be I was just going to like put some chat and then you know you start pulling the thread of the sweater and next thing you know <laughs> the movie's 15 minutes shorter and um but I'm really happy I mean I just it just kept happening I started maybe well maybe I can trim this shot a little bit and then right. this shot became this scene and then it became next thing you know I mean like I said 15 minutes are gone and I think it's just a, a it's a tighter, better, more concise version of the movie. Um, I just wanted to know how the um, the concept came about. Like, did you wake up from a dream and then write, write it down? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't actually with this one. That kind of, I have done that before. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's funny, you know, you ask what's it like to talk about a movie that, you know, originally came out five years ago. And as I've been kind of doing some, some of these interviews this week, um, one of the things that I would say is how much I don't remember from oh, some of this stuff. It's so much easier to talk about something when it's fresh. But the I one thing I do, sure. yeah. the one thing I, I do remember um, is just that me and my uh, producer, Bay Dares, were talking about the TV show Lost a lot. Yeah, my one of my favorite series ever. It's oh, yeah. one of the best yeah. shows ever. And yeah. so that's my earliest memory of Welcome to Happiness started with a conversation about Lost. I remember talking about that show. And then I think at some point I said, um, what if we were, what if we could do something where we took like all the magic and, and mystery and all the, the stuff about loss that's so cool and intriguing, Yeah. But, but took it off of such a grandiose location and just made it in like some guy's apartment, like just like this simple, you know, what yeah. would that be like? And, um, and then the, and then from there, we just kept talking and talking and talking and until, uh, figured it out. Yeah. Right. Until we ended up with, Welcome to happiness. And then you you also um, have an amazing cast in this. I mean, mm -hmm. even back in 2015, I mean, they were all kind of names, like I mean, obviously Nick Offerman and whatever. Mm -hmm. But you, you look at somebody like Keegan-Michael Key, who, mm -hmm. you know, five, six years ago, um, people knew who he was. Sure, yeah. But now, I mean, right. the guy's exploding all over the place. Absolutely. Doing. Um, so it must be great for you to have a few of those names, see where some of these actors have gone since then. Yeah. You give that extra push, I think, to the film for people to watch it now. Sure. And, and, and yeah, like you said, I mean, everyone was, was, was certainly established when we made the movie. And I mean, Ke you know, Keegan was so, so hot from Key and Peele. Right. But, but that's really what he, he was more just like, oh, he's Key from Key and Peele. <laughs> now it's like, you don't even think of Key and Peele necessarily. You just think of Keegan Michael Key, the, the movie star, you know? Exactly. So, yeah. um, yeah. so it's, uh, you're right. It is, it is changed. And, um, you know, I'm not really sure how that will impact things this time around, but hopefully in a good way. <laughs> oh, I, I good. think so. I think it's a little bit extra eyeballs for sure. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think that's, that's all only to your benefit. Now, one of the themes in this film, of course, is having the opportunity to maybe go back and change something or, or, you know, so this character, the main character has a, um, a door and in his closet, he has a secret door and you open it up and the, the specially appointed people are allowed to go yeah. in or whatever. Okay, I don't want to give away too much, but um, if you had the opportunity to go through a door like that and what would you want on the other side? I think I would want to 
cut 15 minutes out of my movie that I made. <laughs> did that so you know sorry doesn't doesn't help it's funny we in a interview the other day I was with Paget Brewster and I hadn't even thought about it she brought up the irony she's like so you have realized the irony haven't you that uh, you made a movie about going and undoing a, a something from your past it's just like it doesn't get much more meta than you undoing something from the past of that movie right. um but anyway yeah I, if I would well I don't know. I um, I can think of some things that I would have, you know, in in hindsight. Oh man, I was a young, stupid idiot, you know. I, or, of course, there's there's uh, been a, a, a couple things in my life that have I would love to have not have had happen. But um, I think the point is everything happens for a reason. So I, I, I think I wouldn't undo it, you know, because right. who knows where I'd be today. Uh, well, so. I, and that's funny because I, I was talking to Paget earlier and we, we were talking about this topic and she had a really good point. She said, sure, maybe you could change something, but then it would affect how life is now. And so mm -hmm. maybe something that might've led to something else might not have led to it because you erased right. it. So it's interesting to think about that. And you're right, mm -hmm. everything does happen for a reason. There's no, yeah. no question about it. Um, so at the end of the day, I want to know if you have discovered what happiness means to you. <laughs> That's a great question. It's a hard question to answer. But yeah, I think I kind of can try to answer it. I think um, for me, happiness is uh, it's a little self-help book e to say this like but it's just how i feel you know it's it's sort of just being able to really exist in the moment um to not be focused on regrets from the past to not be too worried about the future but just to if you can be happy in in, in what you're doing like right now like right now doing this this interview with you you know and just just be in the moment um then that's happiness you know so it's if, if you're uh winning the world series or just sitting on the couch and really enjoying a show or, or whatever just being whatever. in the moment yeah that to yeah. me is happiness yeah yeah i agree with you i agree with you you can't judge people like everybody has their own personal happiness you know yeah it is what it is um did you have a lot of challenges shooting this one especially when you think back about the scenes in the desert you know there's mm -hmm. a lot of different elements you know but that to me looked like it might have been a little hot dirty i don't know <laughs> absolutely yeah you know there were of course there are challenges and you know there's always challenges uh filmmaking is hard but um we we were on a, a, a low budget so that presented a lot of challenges too but one thing we did have going for us is um we were really really prepared mm. there's a lot of preparation and um, a lot of good people working extra hard um so there, there were some fires to put out but honestly this was not like a apocalypse now show up every day and wonder what the heck is going to happen and it's just right. it really it was pretty pretty structured we were, we were pretty good pretty good at staying on schedule pretty good at at having everything planned and worked out and mm -hmm. so yeah there were hiccups and and some stuff and i'm sure things i don't know about that um happened you know they, they kept me safe from but but for the most part i would say it had no no more um craziness than a typical film set yeah. there's always something so right. yeah and yeah. then you had a group of actors too who really wanted to be there i mean yeah absolutely work for no money you know exactly so, and and, yeah. and they're not being pampered in their trailer and stuff like that they're showing up to because they love the material and they want to do the movie so right. i think that made and that was actually the, the case with the crew as well um a lot of you know the crew was just they liked the script and and they liked each other and and they liked me and I liked them and we all sort of got along. So there, there was always just a bit of a feeling of like, yeah, let's go do this. You know, there was a yeah. team effort to it that makes things go a lot more uh, smoothly. So I know you've worked on things obviously since this is, you know, was originally released, but what, mm -hmm. what are we going to get from you next? Well, I, the, I'm actually leaving on Sunday for, oh. um, for Canada uh to, i'm in uh, toronto uh, where are you shooting uh I, winnipeg is, okay is the, yeah and we're, good uh, timing at least it's not winter you're very smart <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and making a an action movie actually of all Whoa. things so totally total departure from um welcome to happiness and uh yeah i'm, I'm 
super, super excited about it. Can you I, tell I us look, anything about it? Like who's in it or just- um, I can't, One person I'll say, it, because we're having the welcome happiness discussion is that uh, Brendan, who plays Niles, is coming with me. Yeah. And he's going to be- <laughs> He calls so me. I, I just talked to him too. I cannot yeah. wait. I can't wait to to work with him again. It's going to be so much fun. And he's uh, yeah, he's yeah. gonna gonna you know get to see him in such a different such a different way. I mean, being a a guy with a gun in his hand for yeah. a very different reason than Good. Welcome to Happiness. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I was telling him that. Um, I well, I, I interviewed him when he was fourteen years old for Welcome to the Dollhouse. Oh yeah. So it was you know, and and that was a movie that really stuck with me. It was such a great film, and um, you know, and mm -hmm. he was fourteen. That was his first <laughs> movie, right? Crazy. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. Wow. And he's so good, even back then you know oh, and, well, for sure. empire records and everything i mean he's just been so good since he's probably just born to do it you know yeah. no <laughs> he's he's great well you had a really good cast at all like everybody in this mm -hmm. film was really really good but uh, yeah. I, i'm glad you, you brought it back and i like i said I, i'm sure that people are really going to enjoy it now and uh, i just want to thank you so much for your time today oh Oliver. it's been a pleasure talking to you thank you absolutely thank you so much and welcome to Canada. <laughs> Thanks. Happy that the borders are open for you now. Yeah, no, no kidding. Problems. Yes, absolutely. Thank Take you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.